Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So I actually just woke up and noticed that the Path of Exile 3.1.0 War for the Atlas patch notes have dropped. Uh, I'll be doing another video going over the development manifesto that they released a day ago. Uh, and today will be featured by uh, Twitch chat that you guys will see on the right hand side. It's going to be maybe a little bit of a different video because I am like still half asleep because I just woke up. But let's go ahead and skim through this stuff and have some fun. So I think a lot of this stuff I may skip over because it's in the development manifesto and I'll be covering that in a separate video, but let's see what we have here. A mysterious entity known as the Elder haunts the world. Okay, so we know about this. Added 32 new maps. Uh, added a new boss fight. Okay, this is with the Elder and the Four Guardians. Uh, introduced shaped and elder items. Let's see what else is in here. I did four, 48 new unique, six new divination cards designed by our supporters. Actually, they said they added a new quest. Added a new quest, the Queen of the Sands. This quest can be obtained by talking to Petrus and Vanja <laughs> in Act 9 after completing the prerequisite quest, the Stormblade. The Book of Skill Quest uh, reward for completing the Stormblade has been moved to the Queen of Sands. Oh, okay. The Stormblade now rewards players with their choice of several rare weapons. Um, added a new Dexterity Intelligence uh, skill gem on Earth. We know about this. Cremation. I'm actually going to make a build with Cremation and Volatile Dead, which is coming out with Body Swap. Here's Body Swap. Here's Volatile Dead. Um, vulnerability got changed, so it's Vulnerability and Despair. So, Vulnerability is now a Strength Gem, curses all targets in the area, causing them to take increased physical damage, and increased physical damage over time, so that's like for Bleed. Attacks against cursed enemies have a chance to inflict Bleeding and Maim. Uh, Despair is the new gem that comes out, uh, or well, it's the new Curse Gem, which is an Intelligence Skill Gem that curses all targets in the area, making them less resistant to Chaos Damage, so the first Chaos Curse we see. Uh, also causing them to take increased damage over time. Cursed enemies also take additional chaos damage when hit. Existing vulnerability skill gems have become despair. Also, Witchfire Brew has been changed instead of vulnerability to despair. Uh, Storm Barrier is another new gem coming out. Volley Support, Spell Cascade, Mirage Archer they just recently showed, which is hitting an enemy with a supported bow creates a Mirage Archer who continues to use that skill for a duration. It basically puts like an archer on top of your head and just starts shooting down. Added 3D Art for Malachi's Mark, Diala's Malefaction, uh, Dendrobait, Hiltless, Void Battery, Red Blade Tramplers, and Lightning Coil. Um, added new unique strong box designed by one of our one of our supporters. Okay, that's pretty cool. Added a new rogue exile based on the winner of the best dressed exile competition. I didn't even know that was a challenge, like a competition. <coughs> All right, abyss abyss challenge league. Um, challenge leagues are a great opportunity for a fresh start in the new economy. So this is just going over the uh, the new abyss league. Uh, let's see. With 3.1, there are standard hardcore variations of the standard and hardcore variations of the Abyss Challenge League available, as well as Soul Cell Found for both variants. I think I'm just going to skip this. This is like, we went over this like 17 times. Okay, minor features. The targeting behavior of many skills has been improved, especially against large targets such as Katava and Arakali. That's good. For people who don't know, Katava only has like two hitboxes, like Act 10 Katava, I believe. It's kind of like close to the arms, maybe like the, the shoulder blade, if Katava even has shoulder. It's like, here's the face, and it's like right here. It's really weird to like hit at. <clears throat> Updated the item frames to fit the current user interface. Huh. Updated the stash chest model. Oh my goodness, our stash is actually going to look different. The tutorial has been slightly adjusted to better direct players who are having trouble very early on. Added a tutorial element for using portal scrolls. What? People need to know how to use a portal scroll? Well, and improved the waypoint tutorial. Uh, added a visible tutorial barrier to the entry of Lion Eyes Watch, which vanishes after a passive skill point is applied. You can now open the help panel by pressing whatever that is. Uh, feels school, man. This can be changed in the options menu. You can now dismiss help panel notifications by right-clicking. Okay, that's good. 
You can turn divination cards in at Navali in the epilogue town or in your hideout. Feels good, man. The description of the divination card achievement soothsaying has been updated to reflect this. Forsaken masters have been moved back to Oriath and now can be found in the epilogue town. Nice, so you don't have to go through all the different acts to try to find them. An effect is now displayed on corpses which disappear. Wait. An effect is now displayed on corpses which disappear due to hitting the corpse creation limit for skills like Desecrate and Unearth. Huh. Oh, it just shows... Okay, that's fine. So, like, if you're spamming Desecrate, I believe it just, like, shows the corpses going away, maybe. Added a new... Wait, added a system for scaling the visual effects? Added a system for scaling the visual effects the visual effects of ailments based on the size of the monster do we actually have a lag slider that we can turn down i did voice acting for many npc and story glyphs which were missing uh which were missing them when they were added in the fall of oriath added images in the map pin uh in the map pin hovers for areas added in the fall of oriath Wander, you can just go Ellie. Ellie wanders are not really that hard to level. A single target might be Kappa. No, that's not what it means. What does it mean? It means that visual effects will scale with mob size. Oh, so they're just saying it doesn't cover like the whole mob. I kind of liked it like that. Well, I mean, as long as, <clears throat> as long as like it reduces lag, I'm like all for that. Values for ailments such as shock, chill, effectiveness can now be viewed in the character panel. Nice. Um, added a system for the visual... Wait. Added a system for scaling the visual effects of ailments. Oh, wait. I already passed this. I'm retarded. Okay, just kidding. Where are we? Added an option to leave your current party in the character portrait drop-down menu. Added an option to leave your current party to the character portrait drop-down menu. The league selected in the drop-down menu on the character selection screen is now saved and will be the selected league whenever you open your client. Oh, awesome. That's cool. This was like super buggy before. Improve the quest reward selection user interface. That's good. Quality of life. Boys, quality of life. Added a timer below each flask icon. <gasps> Added a timer below each flask icon? Which, while the flask is active, displays the remaining duration for that flask. So it's not a debuff bar. It's not a debuff bar. But it's the next best thing. And I'm not going to complain or say shit. I'm happy. No complaints here. <laughs> Dude, I feel like whenever you're doing like crazy sextanted maps, you literally just hit your flasks every two seconds because you just don't know. You just don't have time, right? Debuffs are now displayed on a separate line to buffs. I'm fucking sold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Debuffs are now displayed on a separate line to buffs, flask effects, and charges. Auras you have activated that are affecting you no longer displayed in the buff bar as the skill icon shows which auras are active. Auras from other sources will still appear in your buff bar. Oh, yeah, boys. I'm excited, man. This is going to be like, this is going to be like a polished PoE. Skills with modified cooldowns now show their final cooldown rather than their cooldown modifier. Quality of life. Monsters will now show their rarity as they're emerging. I don't know what that means, but that sounds cool. Oh, I guess like if they show a background if they have like some weird... Maybe this is for like Abyss, I don't know. The challenge challenges tab now displays the number of challenges you have completed at the top. The default minimum for dynamic resolution scaling is now set to 30 frames per second. Uh, improve the effects for monster rarities and ailments. Added supports for subsurface scattering. Check out the ice and candles. I don't know what that means. Optimized a lot of skills. Areas and monster effects. Continued to incrementally improve the sound, art, and environments. Okay. Character balance. Alright boys, RF got a little nerf. 
Intimidate now causes enemies to take 10% increased attack damage rather than 10% increased damage. That's okay, because we're going to use the new Abyss spell with the new Abyss Jewels. The XP penalty at very high levels has been increased, and this was talked about in the manifesto. Alright, skill balance. This actually is not too thick of a, of a skill balance here. Alright. Here we go. Existing vulnerability. Okay, so this is just switching vulnerability and despair. Your minions and their minions. So this works for enemies too. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Will no longer deal or take damage while you are dead. So if you kill someone now that has minions, if they didn't disappear, they can't do shit. So basically, this is only a nerf for softcore. Feels, uh, feels AFK Golemancer Shaper builds. Dark Pack no longer gains bonus radius while using your life. The damage, so self-cast Dark Pack has been nerfed. The damage bonus from using your life grows less quickly as the gem levels up, dealing 76% more damage at level 20, down from 95%. Detonate Dead. This is one I want to see. Now deals spell damage based on the level of the gem. In addition to damage on the corpse's maximum life, the base fire damage dealt by the spell part uh, explosion has been significantly increased. The skill... The spell damage... Wait, the... The base fire damage dealt by the spell part of the explosion has been significantly increased. The skill now additional- wait. The skill now gains additional area of effect radius as it levels. And the base crit has been increased from 5 to 6. And the cast time has been lowered to 0.6 or 0.8. Oh my god, I need to play fucking Detonate Dead so bad. So bad. So bad. I want to play. Uh, this is this is definitely one of my future builds. Ray Spectre now grants additional accuracy to Spectres based on the level of the gem. This is a nice quality of life buff because we could never really see monster accuracy either uh, on our own minions. Bear Trap and Volrain of Arrows now remove all movement speed as opposed to reducing it by 300%. Does this mean that you cannot Whirling Blades while you're Bear Trapped in Reign of Arrows? I don't really know exactly what this means. Raging Spirits now have 15% less added damage multiplier. Up from 30. Oh. <laughs> Summon Skeletons now have 50% more added damage multiplier. Up from 30. Up from 30% less added damage. <laughs> Dude, our, our SRS needed the buff. It's gotta be in line with RF. Raging Spirits, Spiders created by Arkali's Fang, and the Spirit Skulls from Essence of Insanity can no longer taunt their enemies. Wow, taunting with invulnerable minions, lol. Some builds had over 300% movement speed and could still run after Bear Trap slash Fall Rain of Arrows. That sounds OP. The amount of burning damage dealt by the burning gun created by a burning arrow on a character with the Pitch Darkness Threshold Jewel is now determined by the level of the burning arrow skill gem. Orb of Storms can now trigger lightning strikes from channeled skills. What? Orb of Storms can now trigger lightning strikes from channeled skills. I don't know what that means. Desecrate now creates five corpses up from three. Cooldown is reduced to three seconds per stack, down from five. Cast time has been reduced to 0 0.8, down from one. Desecrate's maximum course level now grows more steadily as the skill gem levels up. It can create high level corpse at most levels except for level 19 of the gem in which the maximum corpse level has been lowered from 100 to 81. Lightning Tendrils has been reworked. It is now a channeled skill. For Lightning Tendrils before, Orbo Storms only triggered on the initial cast. Oh, that's right. You're saying, what, so whenever you cast a Lightning Skill inside Norma Storms or something like that, it pulses. So now it's saying that per channeled tick, it rolls a pulse rather than per cast. So basically, every time this rolls the consume mana, if it's not fucking with the internal cooldown, it'll work. Got it. That's nice, then. Uh, 
So Lightning Tendrils gets a visual overhaul. The new version hits slightly less frequently than previously, but has higher sustained damage overall. Minion life support now affects minion life multiplicatively. <gasps> it now provides 30% more minion life rather than 30% increased minion life at level one. Up to 49% more at level 20. Holy shit, dude. Could you imagine? <laughs> 10k HP zombies going to like 15k? Dietus animate guardians with righteous fire. <laughs> yeah, dude. RF animate weapon. Wait. How do you... You can't give... A, you can't give it RF, though. Unless there's like a unique for it. Dark Pack now counts as being a minion skill gem and thus will interact with effects such as one found on... Oh, Cloak Storm. Okay, cool. Interesting, Dark Pack. Ruthless Support can no longer support channeled skills. Cyclone can no longer support it, be supported by Ruthless. Do people usually run Ruthless and Cyclone? Feels Ruthless, man. Iron Will can now support Summon Skeleton and will affect the damage by Skeleton Mages if you're using Dead Reckoning. Oh. Baron Iron Will No No Spot Summon Skeletons. <laughs> Let's do it, boys. Arctic Armor's chilling effect now slows enemies by 30% when you are hit, up from 10%. Melee attacks, um, melee attacks supported by Multi Strike now more accurately take attack range. Uh, including area effect modifiers into account when checking for targets for subsequent attacks. Uh, this has negatively impacted some builds and positively impacted others, but in general, melee skills supported by multi strike will target monsters that's better fit the behavior of the attack. I think the reason for this is that they don't want your character going like attack here and then attack behind you and then attack in front of you and attack behind you because then it feels kind of bad with multi strike if you don't have enough attack speed. So I think it's just trying to make it more like, I guess, cleaner for. The targeting of the skill. Dietus chill by an animate guardian will increase your RF's damage. And then you avoid breaking EE. That's pretty interesting. I like that. Cast Cyclone with Ruthless two times. The third time is buffed until you stop spinning. Ho. Oh. Oh. Ho. Bladefall's area of effect was wider than intended. Close to the caster. The area of effect is now better matches the area the blades visually land. The total width of Bladefall's area has been increased slightly to compensate for the now narrower earlier stages. Stormburst is now correctly modified by factors. Whoa. Whoa. By the way, I've never played Stormburst, but I want to. Stormburst is now correctly modified by factors based on the state of the projectile. Such as powerful precision's projectiles have a 100% increased critical strike chance against targets they pierce. Was oh, this like a dead eye? Dead eye storm burst build confirmed. <clears throat> charge dash now has a limited. Our uh, charge dash is now limited to a maximum of 15 strikes per skill use, as well as limited distance traveled. Static strikes radius has been increased from 19 to 20, bringing it in total radius of 24 at gem level 20. Static strike explosion now correctly applies ailments with 40% less effect. It was previously applying ailments without taking the less damage modifying into account. Wow, nobody ever played static strike, so like no one ever knew it was kind of OP. Feels hidden OP, man. Ice Crash's radius has been increased from 8 to 9 for the first stage, from 16 to 18 for the second stage, and 24 to 26 for the third stage. Earthquake's radius has been increased uh, on the second stage. Reeves' radius has been increased from 17 to 20, bringing it to 24 at gem level 20. Wither now, oh that's right, Wither got a nerf. Wither now increases chaos damage taken by 6% down from 7, and stacks 15 times down from 20. More shall gather. More shall <clears throat> hey, the Waggle plague. with the host. Well, thank you, man, so much. How did the patch notes affect any of your league starters or your builds? I'm sure you've gotten that question quite a bit, right? Welcome, everybody. We are just going over the notes right now. I haven't went through everything, and uh, it is a live YouTube video, so uh, I may not be interacting too much. But yeah, this isn't too bad with the Wither nerf, though, because they introduced that new curse gem. Where is it? I don't remember where it is. Despair? It's called Despair, so it's fine. Ball Power Siphon's radius has been reduced to 70 units, down from 120? 
Feels Vol Power Siphon, man, boys, they're killing clear speed meta. You're doing DP totem, so it's been questions for two days. I need at least it's not self cast DP, right? Divination cards, the locations, drop rates, and requirements for many divination cards have been reworked in a part due to the changes to the Atlas of this patch and in the part to better integrate divination cards into areas introduced in the Fall of Oriath. Uh, life regeneration mods have been slightly renamed and reordered as two higher tiers have been added. What? They're adding life regen tiers? I don't know how I've... I, mm. Life regeneration mods on rare items have been buffed across the board, with existing highest tier mod now granting up to 20 life per second. I don't know. That's still not... Well, I mean, it's not bad, but, like, that's... When my RF guy has, like, 12k HP, that doesn't really do much. You could probably... You could definitely get 12k HP in this with, like, the new Abyss stuff. When used on a bell, Essence of Insanity now grants 10% increased movement speed during any flask effect, up from 5. Confirm, boys. Insanity, Beltcraft. Oh, my. Insanity, Beltcraft on the Abyss. Feels good, man. On the Abyss belt. If you can do that, you should be able to do that. So then you get a jewel with the movement speed. Atlas only... Atlas only item base types can no longer be found in Vol side areas. Alright. Unique item balance. So we haven't seen like anything from here at all. Oh, it's only here. There's monster balance? Oh man, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. It doesn't say monster nerfs. It says balance. Okay. Adziri's acuity no longer instantly leeches life from critical strikes. <laughs> feels feels acuity, man. And instead grants Vault Pact if you deal a critical strike recently. This does not affect existing versions of them. Oh, well then. Looks like Acuity is our going legacy. Witchfire Brew now creates Despair Curse uh, Aura on use. This affects all versions of the item. RF still fine, boys. Doom Fletch got a little bit of the nerf bat. I remember this. Basically, they just removed the, uh, the bonus critical strike chance from it. Kongming Stratagem. This... Oh, this is the this is the sh the fucking the fire trap smoke mine meme shield. Kongming's no longer creates a smoke cloud when a socketed trap is triggered. Instead, grants the fog of war skill, which creates a smoke cloud when any of your traps are triggered. I mean, that's not bad. It's just it's just shields are really important. So, I don't know if I, like, care about that, really. Lion's Roar now only grants knockback to melee attacks. No, dude. This used to be so meme for, like, lightning strike. Uh, like I say, chance to drop from monsters has been greatly reduced. You know what this means, boys? <laughs> T1 rarity. This item was being used on a significant portion of melee characters across all levels. Uh, as an extremely cheap way to get around accuracy requirements. Gee, you forgot about Wanders. Wanders use this too. And like Ellie Spectral Throw, pretty much any attack build that wants to go budget to start off and then like transfer later. Or in general, I think Lycosate is fine. Uh, Beast Ghost Collar, chance to drop from monsters has been greatly reduced. Oh, Beast Ghost even more rare. Queen of the Forest got fucked, boys. You can read this if you want. The uh, movement speed has been completely like nerfed. For, like, Lab Runners and Wanders. Rise of the Phoenix. Maximum fire resistance granted has been reduced from 5% to 8. Life regeneration has been increased from 15 to 20. Because, remember, we have new life regen tiers, boys. These changes can be divined. New versions also grant 40 to 60 life. Boys! RF's dead. I need to talk to you real time. Okay? With this nerf... You can't play RF anymore. It's physically impossible. I think you guys are just going to have to not play it. And the prices of all the gear is just going to be worth nothing. And then I'll play it and make a guide again. No, but really, nothing happened. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> That's totally fine, okay? <laughs> nothing happened. Like, it's just it's just going to be a slight nerf to get the character going. But you do, you do get extra life. Um... So really, the only things for people who are tuning in for RF stuff, the only thing that's, like, noted 
is, for right now, Rise of the Phoenix nerf. And, uh, where's unique item? There's unique I Here, character. Intimidate. So you don't use Belt the Deceiver anymore, and you can just either use, like, Saffle's Frame, an Oak Shield, or you can just use a Rise of the Phoenix still, and it's totally fine. So, that's pretty much about it. <laughs> that's, that's really all there is to do. Which fire brew won't be as good either? Well, I don't know what the the damage over time change has changed to. They didn't really say. Uh, Omen of the Winds now allows Ice Shot to pierce three additional targets down from five. This can be divined. The Dancing Dervish while manifest. The, oh, the Dancing Dervish. While manifest Dancing Dervish is active, Dancing Dervish now has 25% chance to grant you Rampage Kill when it hits a unique enemy. The minion created by this unique can no longer cross unwalkable gaps. These changes affect all versions of the item. The Pandemonious. The chilling effect now slows enemies by 30% when you are hit, up from 10. Uh, the Baron now adds half of your strength to your minions rather than all. Reep. Dead Reckoning now correctly replaces a number of skeleton wars with skeleton mages when using Balsam and skeletons. Death's Oath now properly updates its behavior when items, passes, or skills change in it in some way. Oxium. Clarified that freeze duration, not effect, is based on energy shield. The functionality has not changed. Yeah, but the Mind Over Matter change doesn't have anything to do with, like, my RF character, for example. Monster Balance. Alright. New monsters have been added to areas all throughout Rayclass and Oriath, including newer, more difficult versions of the parasites found throughout Act 6 and 7. So like those little those little like weta things. And Katava Flet or Katava Feed? Katava Fied? Katava Fied versions of black guards found around or found throughout Act 5. The number of monsters in areas throughout the campaign has been adjusted, and the number of monsters found throughout the game should be more consistent. Reep! They're nerfing, uh, what are they called? They're nerfing blood aqueducts. Um, yeah, this particularly affects the old fields of all ruins, sewers, marketplace, battlefront, ebony barracks, crystal veins, but is not strictly limited to those areas. The following unique monsters are no longer immune to freeze and instead have a minimum action that they require. Wait, that they will be set if they are frozen. You can freeze Shaper and Guardians? <laughs> the Shaper, Guardian of Chimera, Guardian of Minotaur, Guardian of Hydra, Guardian of Phoenix, Vision of Justice, Goddess, the Goddess Argus Abigzoth, uh, Host. You can't freeze Host? Unrelenting Frost, Adziri, Queen of the Vol, Vessel of Vol, Adziri's Devoted. I don't know what the fuck a Ka'aj, Aali, Ka'aj, Ya'araza, Ka'akura. Uh, Ali Yaara Oz Ku Ara Tormented Tempress. Monsters which trigger based on the damage they can take now trigger those from damage taken over time. <laughs> Wait, monsters which trigger skills based on the damage they take can now trigger those skills from taking damage over time. Wait, what? Monsters which trigger skills based on the damage they take can now trigger those- OH! Shit! So cast one damage taken, that means the invasion boss, if you hit the invasion boss with RF, he's gonna be like and he's still gonna do it. Molten Shell Goats? Oh my... Yo, they're balancing degens. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. <laughs> I, I liked playing degens, dude. Wait, does that mean, does that mean I get corrupted blood? Dude, I hope the game isn't bugged and I, I like touch a corrupted blood mob with RF and just get instant 20 stacks. <laughs> Please no, dude. Please no, I, I don't want to. I don't know, I don't know like if this means requires a hit or just in general. This will have to learn when we play through. Infested monsters that can spawn parasites when slain now grant increased experience and drops when shattered or exploded. To compensate for them not releasing their parasites on death? <gasps> oh! 
Shield crabs now give additional experience if destroyed before they would unleash their final form. Crimson scholars now give additional experience if shattered. Monsters, here we go. This is it. This is it. This is it. Monster mods. Reflects physical damage and reflects elemental damage have been reworked. They now appear as nemesis mods. Attacking a monster with physical or ele- You hear that? Nemesis mods. Attacking a monster with physical or elemental reflect now triggers a mortar spell targeted at your location. This spell has a cooldown. Both versions of reflect now only appear on nemesis rare monsters. The effects created by flame bear, frost bear, and storm bear bloodlines now ap appear more quickly and should be more are clearly visible. The Rislotha Rice fight in Act Six has been significantly changed. So this is the this is the the poison chaos damage ladybug where you kill the poopy poopitar egg things. Uh, the eggs now explode and create damaging patches in the ground, and her herself is much more mobile. The monsters spawned are her, by her pods are possessed by more difficult parasites, and she is now immune to knockback. She's bugged, by the way, and she was immune to stun last time I fought her. The lightning thorn, unless she is immune to stun. The lightning uh, thorn skills used by Blackguard Mages as well as others no longer deals flat amount of light of reflected lightning damage to attackers. Instead, it triggers a Nova of lightning projectiles. A Nova of lightning projectiles. Confirm new skill coming out, boys. The parasite infesting uh, the the parasite infesting Hollow Skull, the willing host, is now called Encephalophage. Encephalophage can now leap slam. Dude, I'm always really scared whenever a thing with a really long name can use leap slam. Parasites that drop off slain monsters will, will now match their host's rarity. Riptide now better signals when it when it will use its dangerous skills and creates fewer vortexes. I don't remember who Riptide is. Captain Art. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Sorry, my microphone likes to make sure I don't fall asleep here. It's <clears throat> it's very important that it likes to... I don't even know what it does. I, I really couldn't tell you. But anyway, let's go. Moving on, boys. <laughs> testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> uh, okay. For p people on YouTube, don't worry. This will be edited. All of my content on YouTube is edited. So you don't have to worry. <clears throat> okay, where were we? Riptide? Um... Carrion burrowers are now visually distinct from their surface-dwelling counterparts. Uh, the life and damages of... Okay. The beams in the Avarius reassembled encounter now have more pattern variations. <clears throat> they also deal less damage, but the damage persists for a duration after you have been touched. After you have been touched. After you have been touched the beams in the Cato defiler of light encounter have had the same treatment Malagaro slam attack in act 7 and 9 always poisons and maims wow that's shit <laughs> don't ever take a Malagaro slam dude it poisons and maims you oh man uh, sulfuric striders and undying operators can no longer appear in essence monoliths. The bloodstained skeletons found in the blood aqueducts have been made slightly more difficult. I don't think so, dude. They walk so slow. Improved the Tolman encounter in Act 8. Tolman and the Ankh now use a few extra skills. They don't even use skills right now. Katarina missions which require you to find, raise, and kill. Find, raise, and kill, boys! What's, what's this saying? Killed, married, and 
go on a play date with. Kill an undead monster, now use different on-death effects. Oh, I thought they were going to say no longer require you to backtrack. Actually, you don't have to backtrack for this. They teleport to you. Reduce the amount of damage dealt by the Pillars of Carnage Rune Explosion. Chavron's Ball Lightnings in Act 6 and 9 now deal more damage. And as a clear area of effect, this skill also deals less damage at close range. Chavron's Stormburst in Act 9 now fires an additional projectile. It can no longer stun, and it deals less damage to players at close range. Chavron's Summoned Books now have more life and deal approximately 35% more damage. Anu Anakuakotil. Death's Worship now deals physical damage with the Projectile Nova. Our Aging Spirits now deal more damage at lower levels. Grist's Bandit Allies now flee when he dies. Dodre's Spirit is now a little quicker at raising zombies in Act 9. Dodre in Act 9 no longer repeatedly summons a, lo summons a large number of stone pillars. The pillars now die when the encounter ends. Um... Significant portions of the Depraved Trinity Encrowner have been reworked. In particular, Malagaro's Bladefall and Chavron's Ball Lightning have undergone large changes. I feel like Chav got like a complete rework. The damage of Katava's X-Blast has been lowered. I don't even care. It just says it's been lowered. That's all I care about. The Bear Acolytes in Act 6 now move more quickly. Brinecrack now has a sweet suit of cracking new, new skills. Who's Brinecrack? Clockwork golems will no longer simply flee. Instead, they will move around you. Wait, they will move around you and to be based on different conditions, their damage has been increased by 25%. Reduce the damage dealt by a harbinger. Nobody cares. The Augmented Death and Chamber of Sins Act 7. Um, no longer have a chance... At, wait, at touching... Wait, fuck. I, like, got so fucking confused there. The Augmented Dead in Chamber of Sins in Act 7 no longer have a chance to launch a Lightning Soul on Death. Okay. What is this, by the way? I don't care about anything of Harbinger. <laughs> Don can now throw his shield, and it will explode into smaller projectiles. Gee, I wish I could throw a shield that exploded into projectiles. Don has a new projectile skill called Carpet Bomb. Wow. And it doesn't make your floors more comfortable to walk on. The Window Shard monsters in Act 10 now deal more damage, have more life and resistance. Oh, and resist all elements instead of just cold. They spawn in fewer numbers and are larger. They now have altered behavior to be less likely to all use their rolling attack immediately. Plague Wretch in Chamber of Sins now has some friends he can hang out with. Sin and Innocence are now a bit more dynamic during the Act 10 finale. Good, because this guy literally doesn't do anything. The Basilisk now has Stone Gaze ability. If you face each other during this ability, you become petrified. Petrification is similar to Freeze, but it is removed if you are hit by a number of times or the duration runs out. Number of times. Hit number of times. I don't know how I feel about that. Harbinger of Disorder is the corrupted area for the Deathly Chambers. This corrupted zone can spawn in the Ossuary or the Ossuary. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> Tukahama's vanguards no longer summon multiple totems at a time while spectered, and the duration of their totems has been lowered from 5 to 10 seconds. They are likely to place they are less likely to place additional totems while they have at least one totem. Wickerman Righteous Fire has been lowered while spectered. These monsters were using versions of Righteous Fire not intended for specters and were dealing significantly more damage than intended as a result. This change brings them in line with other specters who use Righteous Fire. Reep. All right, we've got map balance, passive tree balance, ascendancy balance, pantheon balance, labyrinth balance, zana. Uh, I don't know what that word is. I've never seen it before. World changes, prophecies, bug fixes, rise QT. All right, we're almost done, boys. Let's see. Where were we again? Monster balance. No, we just read that. Okay. Map balance. Oh yeah, solar guards. That's right. People use solar guards. The entire atlas has been reworked. The entire atlas has been reworked. The entire atlas has been reworked. Many map names have changed as their balance. Tier and posi- Oh, shit. They changed map tiers and their position on the atlas. Many maps have also had their boss fights swapped or completely reworked. The rules used to generate monsters in endgame maps has been significantly reworked. What? The rules? There's a rule to generate monsters? Boys, I'm learning. 
The rules used to generate monsters in endgame maps has been significantly reworked and rebalanced around the rate at which we expect players to reliably clear out the map. In general, narrow linear maps will contain fewer total monsters than maps with complex layouts. We will be closely monitoring and adjusting the balance of this change and expect to make further changes and improvements over time. Do you hear that guys? We will be closely monitoring and adjusting the balance of this change and expect to make further changes and improvements over time. So when people go, excuse me, Mr. Pox Kappa, do you know what the shaped Atlas meta is right now? Remember that it's going to change over time, okay? Map mods have also been rebalanced. Every mod now provides increased item rarity and increased item quantity and increased monster pack size. Though the magnitudes are dependent on the difficulty of the mob or the mod. Malkun. Monsters no longer gain power and endurance charges every 20 seconds as this was consistently causing performance problems. These monsters now have a chance to gain those charges on hit. The number of monsters that appear in this map has been reduced, but the area now grants uh, an increase to experience gain to compensate. Added a new map prefix, Feasting. Uh, areas inhabited by Cultists of Katava, aka areas inhabited by Proximity Shield Spectral Throw. I think, I don't know actually. Many monsters appeared in Act 5 and 10 but did not appear in maps have been added to maps. Okay, no, they appear in maps now. Map bosses which have had multiple forms or faces no longer count as multiple map bosses for the sake of achievement and challenges. Um, Suncaller's Asha's Leap Slam abilities has been rebalanced and now has a 4 second cooldown. Reptar can now smack around players who are standing too close to walls. Feels Reptar, man. Purge. Hounds now come out of their gates from farther away and will pursue players for a long... Okay, that's good. This is based... Oh, Purge Hounds. This is like when you're going through Doreso and you like walk by those, you know, things, all the doges come out. They're actually pretty good XP. They're just... You don't... Nobody wants to like sit around and wait. Water Elementals. By the way, I want to summon Water Elemental skill. I'm a Warcraft 3 fanboy. Uh, Water Elementals and their variants now appear in packs as a mix of visible and hidden monsters as opposed to all hidden or visible. But I don't think they're ever going to do this because this is like a necromancer game. So, uh, the boss of Death and Taxes unique map, unique map now moves 35% faster while immune to damage. Twisted Effigy monsters can now be desecrated if you bring one into a map with you. Roa map bosses now regain 33% of their maximum life whenever you break their nests. Feels? Bad, man. Aren't the Purge Hounds the ones in the Oriath Slave Pens? Oh, maybe they are. Feels bad. Added a pack of magic monsters to the boss of the boss rooms of maps that were missing them. Oh, shit. There is a pack of magic mobs in every single boss room. That's really good. Monsters can now appear close to the entrances of Oba's Cursed Trove. The Hollowed Ground unique map is now on the cemetery base type. Passive tree changes. Vol Pact. This got changed. Has been significantly reworked. Might as well just say, like, has been changed. Oh, I, I mean, fuck it. Whatever. I'm tired. No longer grants instantaneous life leech and instead doubles <clears throat> the rate of your life leech as well as your maximum leech rate. It has been moved to the duelist area. The passive skills behind Mind Never Matter now grant 10% max mana down from 12 on the notables um, and 30% increased mana down from 40 and 40 added mana down from 100 this got a pretty fat nerf, but I think it's still fine for leveling and even playing a mom build. The Hemo to Fuck Fuck a G now grants 3% maximum life leech per second to maximum leech rate down from 5. Same thing with Vitality Void. Passive skills which previously granted increased melee physical damage while holding a shield now grant increased physical attack damage while holding a shield. It is no longer restricted to melee. Many passive skills which previously only provided defensive bonuses while using a shield now also grant increased physical attack damage with ailments while holding a shield. Removed one of the passive skills leading to the Ash, Frost, and Storm notable near the Scion. That's okay. <clears throat> Ascendancy balance changes. Alright, let's see if RF got nerfed. Slayer. Okay, RF didn't get nerfed. Brutal Fervor no longer grants 10% maximum life leech per second. Feels, <laughs> feels leech rate, man. 
the map bosses you are required to defeat to upgrade your pantheon have for the most part changed. Shakari has been added to the pantheon. New pantheon, boys! Added a new dark shrine effect that can only be found in the eternal labyrinth. A labyrinth, okay. Change the requirements for some chests to appear in general. Chests should feel more uh, rewarding and better suited for the difficulty and level. Increase the total amount of items found on average from silver chests. All right. Labyrinth damage has been removed from the game. You now only have to fight Azaro, and you can completely choose to opt out and skip all traps. Wow, I really like that change. I'm just kidding. The helmet enchant, which grants additional projectiles, has been removed. Oh, that, that's right. That got completely fucked. All right. Zana League mods available during 3.1. Let's see what we have here. Um, level 2. Anarchy costs 2 cast orbs. Area is inhabited by 3 additional rogue exiles. 20% increased quantity. Bloodlines cost 3 chaos. Uh, magic monster packs, or magic monster packs, each have a bloodline mod, 25% more magic monsters, and 20% quantity. Beyond is 3 chaos orbs with 20% quantity. Fortune favors, fortune favors the brave chosen one. Selects a Zana mod at random from those available, including any mods you have not yet unlocked. But wait. So this is just for fun? Is that the point of it, I guess? Select a Zana mod at random from those available from the from the device. Oh, including any mods you have not yet unlocked. Oh, I didn't read this part. I okay, reading is hard, boys. Ambush costs four chaos orbs. Areas contain three additional strong boxes. Domination costs four chaos orbs. Area contains three shrines. Essence costs five chaos orbs. Area contains two additional essence monoliths. Uh, and then breach contains two additional breaches. PvP balance. Um, completing the mercy mission quest now rewards players with their choice of support gems as well as a flask. The hedge maze has now been removed and both Chitius Plum and Trial of Ascendancy have been moved to the Imperial Gardens. Uh, Stormglyph has been added to areas all throughout Rayclass, but in particular the areas added in the Fall of Oriath. The Strange Barrel now contains many more ordinary non-swarming things. Um, the Fuel event in the Beacon is now more involved with extra monster packs spawning during the event. Good, that's that little part where you like move with the pillar. And the Southern Forest, especially Act 6, uh, oh, the Southern Forest, especially Act 6 has been fleshed out. The Act 6 version can now generate Vol side areas. In the lead-up to the Depraved Trinity encounter, the heart entrances to Malagaro, Shav, and Dodre areas stop beating as you defeat the associated boss. The Templar stash in the Act 10 Osiria has been renamed to the Sealed Chest and has been given a new model. Hargan no longer discusses High Gardens and talking to him about it is no longer required for the All Ears achievement. Added numerous variations to the world throughout the campaign. Most areas in particular added, or areas added in the Fall of Oriath now has several new possible layouts. Vol's proclamation in the Western Forest is now destroyed in part two. You should check it out. It's pretty neat. Updated the minimap icons, four doors uh, and area transitions that were missing them. Shrines should no longer appear directly outside Tukama's fortress. Um, Katav Katavin's Katava's arena in Act 10 is now called the Altar of Hungry. Feels Altar of Hungry, man. Malachi's journal no longer references an incorrect date. All right, let's see the PvP challenges. Remove the level 60 Sarn Arena variant. Players who do not fit the requirements for level 40 Sarn Arena will be taken to the open Sarn Arena. Characters which have entered the portal to Oriath at the end of Act 4 can no longer join low-level dueling queues. Death's Oath now deals significantly less damage against players in PvP and Grand Masters. PvP-only characters can no longer activate the map device. Bleeding Ignite Poison now undergo PvP scaling. Oh. Prophecies. Rare monsters able to fill the requirements for unique item prophecies have been added to various locations throughout the world. They provide the opportunity to obtain an item with a high enough level to be six linked. I don't know if that... I 
I don't know if... If this actually, like, does this, this is saying they have an increased drop rate of six links, right? Or is that just saying it cannot be on a mob that's too low level to get it? The point of that is for Belly of the Beast Prophecy. I'm very confused. It means Prophecy items can be six link. Oh! Oh, 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 you're just basically, oh, oh, I see. So when you get like super low item level stuff, I get it, I get it. But I mean, you could always six lick it. You could just force it at Verici for six socket and then do it yourself. But I could totally understand that. This is OP. You're no longer required to have the subject of faded unique prophecy equipped and can now complete such prophecies by merely holding the item in your inventory. So what this means is like if it says, you know, please kill Doresso with a gold rim on both of your feet, you know, so then you got to sacrifice your gloves and your boots for both of your feet. You don't have to do that anymore. It can just be in your inventory. Uh, the prophecy, the twins, which turns... A non-twin map into a twin map no longer grants 6% increased quantity of items found. The Prophecy Monster's Treasure now completes upon opening the final strong box in the area. Alright, bug fixes. Here we go, boys. Bug fixes. Okay, before I go into the bug fixes, I do want to go over the responses to the feedback because I know not a lot of people care about this. So, let's go ahead and just go over this. So, the reason for these patch notes... <clears throat> Posted by Chris Wilson himself. <clears throat> this was honestly a time issue. We have buffs planned that have been pushed to later 3.1 uh, point whatever patches or 3.2 due to incomplete... Um, wait, due to being incomplete as of this week. The 3.1.0 expansion was developed in under... I need my fucking glasses to do this if I'm, like, fucking half asleep. <laughs> Under an aggressive schedule, fitting what would normally take 26 weeks into 17. While we try to budget sufficient time to include everything we want into a release, we felt that this was an acceptable compromise over not having a big December release for you to enjoy during the holidays. Buffing stuff isn't just a matter of typing a bigger number into a box but often involves recreating content from the ground up, like with lightning tendrils. Also, please note that many buffs have come in the form of new, unique, or skill combinations that aren't 100% obvious from quickly skim reading the patch notes. Not enough buffs for an uproar for an unpopular ascendancy classes. 3.2.0 is planned to have a rebalance of all ascendancies Notably including the Scion and Elementalist. The Scion and Elementalist. Breach is on level 8 Zana. We absolutely know that you like Breach, and that's why the Abyss League has been designed in the way it has. It is like the new Breach, and in almost every area it's balanced... Wait, and it's in almost every area, and it's balanced... Um, in basically the same way, terms of hectic fights and item rewards. Okay. That's good. Breach still occurs 10% of the time in maps. It's easy to roll with the fortune favors the brave overcome, or outcome. And we chose to include it on Zana's list for a second consecutive league rather than rotating it out. There are certainly going to be a lot of breaches opened in 3.1. The Baron nerf. This item should have gone out in its original state. Uh, a single item granting a 200% bonus to melee physical damage for minions is not acceptable. We are very sorry for this. <laughs> And we had to later nerf it. It's still a great item. From what I overhear in the office, the new Abyss Jewels are outrageously powerful for summoners and can roll so much crazy shit. <laughs> so with this release, we pulled... Oh wait, the patch notes are generally underwhelming. So with this release, we pulled out the new expansion details, the league, all the specific nerfs, and heaps of new tidbits. For some reason, I thought that said tile sets. For a separate announcement. This has left patch notes themselves somewhat dry for exceptionally interesting information as we generally spotlighted it earlier with the exception of the new flask UI. Hedge maze removal, character, league drop down, quality of life changes, etc. Do you feel the approach was worse? 
than holding back information to bolster the patch notes with crazy reveals. I think it's fine, dude. The quality of life in here, I'm very happy with the quality. Like, that's like the main thing for me. Of course, I love content and everything, but not getting triggered at the game because of basic things, I think, is also very, very, very important. The Atlas Rework is underwhelming for the Reddit community. Dude, if if Chris Wilson, like, came down from heaven himself and, like, redid the Atlas step by step for each person and implemented they want, Reddit would still be like, excuse me, Mr. Chris Wilson, but that's not enough. I want Endgame! So it's just, you gotta just accept Reddit. They're, they're beautiful people in their culture. It's just, that's about it. <laughs> All right, bug fixes. Fixed a lot of typos and mismatches between character dialogue as spoken as dialogue as spoken and as written. Um, fixed a bug which caused certain chests in the labyrinth which were intended to drop only Julie to instead drop items of all kinds. Fixed a bug which caused earlier levels of raised zombie skill jump to display the wrong life values. This does not affect zombie life balance or zombies. Yeah, zombies balance. Fixed a bug with some Verici missions. Uh, requirement would continue to be displayed even after completing or failing the mission. Fix the bug where turning in a set of the signed ignition cards was giving a corrupted whispering ice without the 20% quality, Kappa? Fix the bug where the notab uh, notable practical application granted strength and dexterity as separate rather than combined stats. This does not change the function or passive, okay? Fix the bug where you could bypass the barrier in Act 7 chain rips since early. Fix the bug where Ice Bite could support totem, trap, and mind skills, despite its effect not working on them. Fix the support description, or s clicked support ability description text of both Ice Spy and Innervate. Fix the bug where the Defiance Notable is granting increased melee physical damage that was not conditional to holding a shield. Fix the bug where you could leap slam out of General uh, Addis' arena without completing the encounter. Also prevented access to Trothan Powder and General Addis is dead for a good measure. You know what you did, Rise, Mr. Mr. Rise QT. I actually know that, Skip. That's the lightning guy. You can just like go to the top left corner and like flame dash or I don't know if you, like how many mobility skills you can use. But if you just like fuck with the mouse cursor on the other side of the wall, you can just. <clears throat> Fix the bug with the increased global armor while you have no energy shield stat found on the broken faith unique item. This modifier was not correctly applying to armor, which was gained by converting evasion rating to armor with the iron re reflexes keystone passive. Fix the bug with bonuses, oh wait, sorry, with the bonus unique Labyrinth Shrine effect that would cause a huge lag spike when activated. Fix the bug which prevented some monsters from being able to trigger their minds. Fix the bug where tormented spirits could possess the Solaris and Lunaris orbs during the Dusk and Dawn encounters. Well, that sounds shitty. I like how everything here starts with Fix the Bug, Kappa. Fix the bug in some languages where the skill pop-up UI would not properly scale to fit some text fields. Fix the bug where the text on the challenge screens would- okay. Fix the client crash caused by low mana tutorial. Hey man, my mana is low. Let me just open this tutorial crash. Fix the bug where totems with low maximum life values would fail to reach one life due to rounding, thus failing to properly disable Righteous Fire. Fix the bug where you could kill Aberath, the Cloven One, before it transitioned into its later phases. Um... I know it's bug fixes. It's just funny. That's all. Fix the bug where the gem level up tutorial would incorrectly override other tutorials. Fix the bug where shrines could occasionally be placed in unreachable locations. Uh, fix the bug where click where double clicking a character with an expired name would deselect the character while you are changing its name. This would prevent the renamed character from being automatically logged in. This happened to me all the fucking time. Actually, this used to always happen to me. <laughs> well, not always. Happened like at least like five times. Fix the bug where selecting a slot on cosmetics have after switching the cosmetics. Okay. Fix the bug where modifiers to ailment damage from attacks while holding a shield were applying twice if you weren't using Bar Nostra. Fix the bug where section that grains pray, uh, players instant life and mana recovery from Flask was not granting any instant recovery. Fix the bug where removing static str Okay. Uh, enemies hit by Sunder's linear component also unintentionally got hit by the area of effect that it created. Wait. What? Is this an actual bug or is this Sunder's mechanics? Sunder's linear component also unintentionally got hit by the area of effect that it created? Fix the bug where low level characters. Yeah, this is. This is. Sunder just got. Either okay, hold on. 
Either this was a bug, or Sunder literally just got fucking shit on. <laughs> I thought this is how Sunder was supposed to work, yeah. Sunder may have gotten gutted. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Fix the bug where low-level characters in the same league and the same account as characters in Shaper Questline. Uh, fix the bug where... Effects that change the size of your character could cause some spells and effects to appear incorrectly. Fix the bug where damage or time effects were not causing some boss to transition through uh, un through their phases. This could result in pure damage over time characters being unable to progress through some fights. Pretty sure that's happened to me before. <laughs> Fix the bug where Dodre could kill herself. Well, that's not good, Dodre. Fix the bug where skeletons, the skeleton general summoned by Valsam and skeletons played the wrong effects. Fix the bug where you could continue to channel skills... Uh, even after being reduced to zero action speed. Fix the bug where you could automatically update public parties tab. Wait, when automatically updating public parties tab would turn off AFK mode. Uh, fix the bug where Forsaken Masters could teleport into a position that blocked access to areas such as doorways. Fixed uh, displayed duration on Intervey and Arcane Surge on skills to have their own duration modifiers. Fix the bug where duration instances of temporal chains applied on hit from items was too short. Fix the bug to attempting to respawn a hideout where the waypoint was blocked by an object could cause you to disconnect. Fix life and mana levels overlapping text with the help panel open. Fix the bug where unique maps which shared a base type with a map had a boss whose soul could be captured for the pantheon would be displayed as having that boss. Fix a glacial hammer. We fix a bug where a glacial hammer could sometimes not interact correctly with Herald of Ice's shatter effect. All right, we're going to we're going to go down by the to the bottom. <laughs> I don't like reading bug bug fixes. Fix a bug where item hovers would sometimes vibrate. Hey, look at that. I'm happy I started from the bottom. You know what this reminds me of? The the hovering text in Do you guys remember that I think it was called Johnny Quest. There was that little blubber dude and he'd be like hey, 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 hey. I feel like every time I look at the wobbling text, I think of that fucking character. I don't know what what that guy was. Blink Arrow's behavior and reliability on unusual terrain has been improved. Fixed a bug where French rare names were not always using the correct gender for the epithet. Fixed a bug where players could have more than one number of pets they were actually own following them. Wow. Nice skamaz, Gigi. Fixed a bug where the Ankh of Eternity and the Teardrop Quest items were missized for the size of their art. Uh, fix the bug where lightning lightning rods in the general Odyssey's Minotaur fights could be knocked back. <laughs> fix some audio popping cracking issues. Nice. Fix the bug where shield crabs <clears throat> in the boiling lakes didn't drop loot. Fix the bug where the vol ruins in Act 2 could generate a pile of extra rooms it wasn't meant to. Um, fix the bug where grandmasters were only gaining more attack damage from frenzy charges, not general damage. Removed several of Silk's old dialogues. Fix the bug where Felshrine ruins could generate a vol side area on the wrong side of the river. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, dude, did you assume my gender, dude? Move the Labyrinth Silver Chest and other rewards from walls. Um, fix the bug where some tightly packed areas, such as Forsaken Master Mission areas, would try to fail... Wait, would try to... Would try and fail to spawn extra mobs like Tormented Spirits and Rogue Exiles. Now they should try and succeed. Great job. Nice. Fixed some slightly wonky descriptions and Fortify Centric Passive Skill. Cool. Um... Fix the bug where storm burst explosions were not destroying chests, uh, chests and random barrels and stuff. This is pretty much everything, right? Fix several instances of skills becoming invisible after leaving and re-entering an area. Oh, oh, this is really good. This is hopefully for monsters. This means when you like take a portal and leave and there's a skill effect, it doesn't fucking kill you. So that's really good. Fix the bug where uh, gaining multiple shrine effects of the same type and labyrinth would stack rather than replace each other. Fix the bug where despite being untargetable, allied harbingers and other... Nobody cares about harbingers. Fix the bug where gaining multiple shrine effects of the same... Oh, yeah, that's right. We just read that. All right, boys. That's pretty much it. So, overall, overall, I want to say I think that I am pretty happy uh, with these patch notes. Um, I'm pretty happy to see that not only RF, but my other, my other league starter... Uh, did not get nerfed and I'm gonna show you guys what that league starter is specifically um, Now this oh, this is not the right uh, I'll fix it after 
Uh, this character is um, this character is a very unique and special character. Um, <laughs> give me one sec. I need to fix my keybinds. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just gonna I'm gonna brute force it, boys. We're gonna we're gonna go. <laughs> okay, okay. Go 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 go. Where is it? Where is it? I just I need to see if it still works. This is not the right area. Okay, hold on. <laughs> just just wait. I promise this will be worth it. Oh, I probably shouldn't have made a new instance. God bless you on this fine day, Exiles. It's the Immortal Lab Runner, boys. That's right. But I can't find- I can't find the trial to run, dude. Okay, either the trial is here... Hold on, boys, we got this, I promise. Oh, I don't have cast on death portal! Shit! Where's cast on death? Oh, man, we gotta do this without the cast on death, boys. This is getting really awkward now. Yeah, dude, it's the immortal character. Cannot die. It's impossible to die. I have never died. What even hit me? Yo, what? What even hit me? Where's my Where's my portal gem, dude? Did I get rid of it? Okay, here's portal. Where's Where's cast on death? Is it green? I don't I don't see cast on death. <laughs> Team, I need help. Where is it? All right, boys, we're good to go now. We got We got cast on death portal. We're good to go. I promise. Okay, let's do this. Let's go back. Do 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 do. Still viable, boys! Anyway, for the people on YouTube, hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Um, if you guys are curious on the Immortal Lab Runner build, I will post that later. Um, but anyway, like I said, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I will release a video on the development manifesto uh, later. And remember, if you are curious, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. So hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. As for stream, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere.